what's going to be up and coming here. Let's have a cheeky look at the prize cards. As you said, Todd running a lot of one-offs in his deck can be a little detrimental if the prize cards come to bite. Yeah, of course, we see the 1-1 one, one bit barrel line being prized. That's not terrible. I think that when we look at this, uh, usually you, we think, oh, that little bit of consistency is not available to me. But prizing both of them isn't terrible because at least you know you don't have access to either of them. Sun, Charmander. <laughs> <laughs> it begins. Charizard versus Charmander. Todd is going first. Going straight in with an Ultra Ball. Discarding the Urshifu V. I imagine Nofume is no stranger to, to Todd Box at this point. I think when it gets to a certain stage in the second day, you kind of know what the big stars of the show are playing. However, that doesn't give him particularly any advantage. No. Of course, I think that Todd uh, would have been the talk of the town coming into this tournament as to what he was playing. I know that he sneakily let people know exactly what might be on his mind with that rapid strike in Teleon, but nobody quite knew what exactly was going to be included in this deck. But of course, I still think there's that element of surprise that people will be taken aback by um, when playing Todd with this archetype. I think there are so many different uh, approaches that Todd can take, and rapidly as well. He can hey. alter that game plan. I like, the, I like the little rapid strike pun there. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, <laughs> doing my job for me, buddy. Uh, what do we think Todd's going to be looking to take here? I, I was about to say, I, I'm, th I'm feeling the Rotom is being pondered, but I'm not sure otherwise. Yeah, I like the Rotom V on turn one. It's a fantastic card when you're able to open it just because of that instant charge ability. Adding an additional three cards into your hand when you have all of these combination pieces that you rely on can really come at an advantage. Does end your turn, though. So, good early game when we can't attack going first, starting Rotom. I don't think you know, nobody's complaining about that. The only kind of, I want to say the word issue, but it's really not an issue due to Todd's build of deck, is there aren't any basic Pokemon to evolve on the board yet. So, we've got no Pidgey, we've got no Charmander, we're not looking at kind of anything, but... Todd has plenty of tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, for sure. I think this is going to be vital to Todd's setup overall, is this instant charge, just to get some extra cards, extra combination pieces in the hand for those later turns. Unfortunately, draws into that battle VIP pass. Would have loved to have seen that, of course, if it were a card earlier to draw for turn, but the turn is over to Nofume, and of course, starts that Charmander and a benched one to boot as well. Ooh, Artisan. And an Iono. Really early disruption there. Kind of sad for Tor just having done that instant charge, but then again, a fresh hand doesn't really look like it would be such a bad thing right now, so I'm not too mad at that. But I also quite like the Artisan. I feel like it actually doesn't benefit Tor that much, but Nofume can definitely make consistent use of it. I think if Nofume wants to get up and running and he wants to get his engine of that Pidgeot quick search um, as an option for him, we'll have to play the Artisan just to have an extra out to to that Pidgey to start getting set up. Yeah, definitely need it. And again, Nufume is going to be relying on consistency of having the, the kind of tried and tested Charizard build and relying on that consistency may just allow him to stay ahead of the game. I think their game plan is a lot more linear, obviously, than Torts. I don't have to repeat that, of course, uh, with so many cards able to be played by Tord. I think that with Nofume's approach to this, I think it would be just simply to get those Charizards up and running and start applying disruption as early as possible. Start applying the pressure as, so, um, as soon as he could with that burning darkness. And for most Pokemon on Tord's side, that 180 base damage will be able to start taking knockouts. Yeah, turning up the fire early, switching that oven on, getting cooking, is going to be essential to stifling Tord's setup potential. Tord's going to need a couple of turns to get this engine going. We were just talking a minute ago backstage, and Tord was saying he needs to be, you know, roughly four turns ahead, thinking in his own mind of what needs to happen, what sequence of turns, what Pokemon, what items, what supporters need to come down. So Nufume has the opportunity to jump in there. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think with Tord's deck, of course, we all like to little, have a little laugh and a joke about this list, but I think what Tord would have really come into this competition knowing is how to beat the big players of the meta. How do I beat uh, Giratina V-Star? How do I face up against Roaring Moon? And of course, more importantly in this circumstance, Charizard EX. Zip, zap, zing. We've gone for more instant charge this time on Nofume's side of the board. 
Yeah, that instant charge, giving him those three additional cards, just what he would have wanted to see. Of course, himself playing Charizards needs to find those combination pieces, those rare candies as well as those Charizards, and maybe even an Alvin here or there as well. Love that Nofume found the justified gloves there. <laughs> that could be something in the turns of tide of this battle. I've got my eye on those gloves. Yeah, having an additional 30 damage on Darkness Pokemon could come to a great advantage for Nofume. Of course, playing that for the mirror match, more or less, to add that extra damage output and maybe even a roaring moon here or there as well. But of course, uh, having that extra damage output uh, may come up as an early uh, as an early advantage against Tord's Charizard. And here comes the Pidgey. Love to see it. Again, Tord saying, OK, right, you can do consistency. Baby, I got consistency too. And it might come down to a battle of the quick search. <laughs> he would have loved to have seen that Artisan coming down, only because that Tord has these different pieces that he needs to find as soon as possible. So having that Artisan down, having that extra out to find these basic Pokémon like Pidgey would have been such a great uh, asset for Tord to see. I also really like to see that Sobble. Hi, Sobble. <laughs> been a long time, little man, but actually, I think the damage modifiers that you give yourself with Inteleon are really lovely in a kind of vague Charizard mirror match. Well, we know that Charizard has such high HP cost, right? It's 330. It's a big boy. Uh, it, it really soaks up a lot of damage from a lot of these decks in the meta. Not many uh, Pokemon can reach those sorts of numbers, so having that quick shooting Inteleon may be relevant as towards starts so, uh, doing the, some damage of himself. I think so. Quite often you're only sort of 10, 20 damage off anything in any given matchup. You're like, oh no, thinking to yourself, I really am just 10 shy. That feels really pants. But actually, in this instance, has an answer to that. Yeah, we saw it in the matchup earlier against the Reg Gigas uh, archetype, of course. That Charizard able to soak up the damage, but of course towards seeing the priority in getting that Inteleon up and running. And here we see the attachment of the Justified Gloves and a nice little Pokemon uh, Professor's Research, sorry, getting rid of that Luminous Sign, Lumenion V. But we are getting ready. Nofume has now started the blazing trail of Charizard, attaching plenty of energy. Evolutions are happening. Hand is looking a little bit sparse of anything more to achieve this turn, but a KO on a Radiant Charizard is nothing to turn our noses up at. Yeah, I think you're really comfortable taking this first prize going ahead of the prize race, but what Tord will be looking to do now is start building up that hand, building up his game plan as he approaches the late game. I think with Tord having so many pieces that he has to kind of play around, um, I think that he'll be looking to really pack a punch as we approach the mid to late game. Rare candy, baby. Let's see what's going first. Pidgeot! We love it. Just speaking about that consistency a minute ago, Pidgeot allows us to search once per turn for anything in the deck. Yeah, there's no consistency like just grabbing your deck and <laughs> getting any card you like. Quick Search is such a popular Pokemon, especially with this Charizard uh, variant, of course. So many pieces required to get that uh, Pokemon up and running and getting attacking. But Pidgeot will, you know, give you that extra consistency, will give you those extra pieces with that Quick Search. And here we see Tord evolving quite nicely into his own. And with an Artisan now, just having a little deck search. I wonder what's coming out now, Amy. I gotta say, in this in this scenario and in Tord's deck in general, the Pidgeot's are also a valid attacker using Blustery Wind. Not only does it you, may you discard a stadium and play, it does 120 damage. And if you add that onto the damage from maybe a tempting trap with Morwile the previous turn, that's a huge amount of damage. That can genuinely take some meaningful game-changing knockouts. Yeah, I really like uh, the fact that he's hiding behind this Pidgeot EX. Of course, he knows that not taking a prize card uh, anytime soon. No, Fume's damage is capped right with that 180 from uh, uh, burning darkness he's not going to be doing as much damage to maybe pose a threat to this pitchy rtx or even that roton v on the bench yeah i think you're absolutely right it's so clever from tor just going you know what it's fine it's okay Tord knows he can take his time with this and get set up because Nofume's damage is capped. Yeah. And also allowing Nofume to even up the prize race, possibly, if Nofume did, if Nofume did find a way to knock out a Sobble or Charmander, let's say, 
then, you know, if Tord does take out a Charizard or even a Rotom V or even a Pidgeot EX, we're still even prizes, so those pesky counter catches don't activate. Yeah, of course, and here we see the Ultra Ball. I think Tord was just deliberating whether he wanted to go back into the deck. Definitely wants to, wants to switch out another Pokemon here. Ultra Ball discarding the Charmander and the Fire Energy. We do know that two Super Rod are in the prizes for Tord, so we'll have to watch out for that uh, important resource of energy, uh, giving him less of a chance to get see those energy in the later turns, of course. They are his only two copies as well. Uh, here we see opting for the Charizard EX as well. Oh, here we see the Thornton, Amy. The Thornton switching that Rotom V for another Charmander. Oh, that's one of my favorite moves. You can evolve it straight away because it still counts as being in play for a turn. So straight away, rocketing into Charizard out of nowhere. I really like this play. This is exactly taking us all by surprise as to what is going to happen next. Having that versatility of Thornton, discarding that Charmander, being able to Thornton it right back. This is synergy in play for Todd. Beauty in motion. You love to see it. Honestly, Thornton's one of my favorite cards in this list. And utilizing all sorts of supporters, one-off supporters quite often is the case, Tor's able to then just pal pad the ones that he needs for each matchup back into the deck and keep using them. He's in a really good position here as well. I think everybody that has played the Charizard EX Mirror will know how important the first hit is on your opponent's uh, Charizard EX. Having that damage now, of course, the 330 looks quite intimidating, but having 330 on your own and having no damage on yourself is a very good position to be in. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely couldn't have said it better myself. No, Fume is now in a situation where they need to deal with this damage if possible to get to almost set that damage on Tord instead. Kind of turn the tide of this game and swap the Charizard, which is damaged, if he can, but I'm not sure the resources are there, you know. Yeah, of course, and, you know, without Tord taking a prize and with no Fume going ahead of the prize race, he does have that additional damage being done with his own Burning Darkness, so is able to maybe go for a future boss play on the Rotom V next turn. Can do that. I doubt he will. I think he's happy to soak some damage and do some damage to um, his opponent's Charizard, start putting them in a more manageable HP cost for his other attackers. Yeah, I think you're totally right. In a really commanding position here. But Tord has so many tricks up his sleeve. I wonder what's coming next. Yeah, what's coming next is definitely the story with this deck. <laughs> I think that, you know, this, we, well, I'm just going to continue to mention it all the time long. There are so many ways that Tord can approach this matchup. Definitely so many different players and a really important collapse stadium there as well. Yeah, the stadium has collapsed. Rotom's jumped back into the discard pile, taking away a double prize option for Tord. I think that, especially with the fighting type weakness, that's kind of scary, right? Yeah, mitigating the risk. We, I think Nofume would be well aware that, of course, Tord is playing kind of this mini rapid strike package. Having that uh, rapid strike Urshifu V definitely wants to mitigate the risk of that fighting type weak two prize Pokemon on the bench. Yep, and just taking that option away. I suppose there was the option that possibly Charizard could have had the same fate, but it just doesn't feel as effective when, at very least, Charizard can lash out a big fire-type attack here. Yeah, of course, and here we see the Charizard EX just deliberating whether he wants to evolve that Charmeleon on the bench, and I think he's going to go for it. I don't see much risk in doing so. I think evolving here, just establishing a fantastic board state as the game goes along. I think it, you know, you have the problem of possibly future INO plays from Tord and with Roxanne as well. I think just establishing a great board here would definitely be the play. Yeah, setting up advantageous attackers for future turns on the bench is so important to the Pokemon trading card game. It's just a fundamental, making sure it's the, okay, what next? What's going to be able to take me my next five prize cards and win this game? Well, I do need another Charizard. That one does need evolving at some point. And yeah, Todd can do some pretty mean bench damage. So making sure that, you know, I'm as safe as possible. Remembering that Terrastalized Pokemon 
can't take any bench damage. Yeah, I really like it. And here we see Tor just soaking up some damage from Nofume's burning darkness attack. Now, I think why Nofume actually was maybe taking a back by why he wanted to maybe not evolve that Charizard is because Tor could, of course, now just boss it that up do a little bit more damage with the Burning Darkness and leaving Nofume with no option but to start attacking with two heavily damaged Charizard EXs. Ooh, yeah, that is a very, very valid point. And two, two heavily damaged Charizard EX, that, that scares me. That's yeah. enough to scare me. Yeah, it definitely does. And I think Tord now playing an artisan of his own. Pumping the Collapse Stadium. We've got some more bench space to boogie with now. Yeah, of course, just eyeing up that Squover, I believe. I really liked that combination, especially with the Pidgeot EX. It's not actually a combo that I had considered before, but i got to say I really like it, being able to squab it and then quick search for maybe a supporter or the Bibarel, which we know we're not going to get right now, but maybe for later. Really like that combo of just being able to forcibly refresh your hand. Yeah, I really enjoy the Nestash. I think that sometimes, I mean, we've seen it before on some of our live streams here at Pokemon. That Nestash, just that one additional card can sometimes be the step over the line that you need to get uh, your engine up and running, or maybe even that last combination card to get a massive attack off. But like you said, in combination with Quick Search, you can find those supporters, get those resources that you have in your hands back into the bottom of the deck. But here we see opting for a worker, rather, getting rid of that Artisan, so Nofume will won't have that option in the future turn. I think it's genius that Tord's gone for the Pidgeot and Bibaral engine, you know? Yeah, genius. I really like it. Yeah. It, I mean, it's consistency in motion, right? I mean, yeah. you have the you have the industrious and sizes, you have the quick search. You know, there are different ways that Tord can approach this, and especially with Squover as well, that's usually combined with that industrious and sizes. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> this difficult engine doesn't look so difficult anymore. No, exactly. And just having that consistency you see is so imperative that Tord's gone, okay, I need to be flexible. I need to be fully flexible in this. I need to be able to do a backflip with this deck. And so he made it possible. He goes, okay, Thornton, we'll have B-Barrel and we'll have Pidgeot. It's all good, I've got this. And honestly, it works. I'm, I'm thrilled to say it works. And there we go, a huge KO, an exchange of heavy hits has started the fight. I really like the position that Nofume is now in. I think if Nofume is able to gust up that uh, Charizard EX on the bench, it leaves Tord with no option but to start attacking with damaged Charizard EXs, as we established earlier. But also, without taking any prizes, you're still capping Tord's damage out put with Burning Darkness. I think that if you're able to do that as well, you're leaving with two very vulnerable two prizes on board. Mm, I love that. In a really, I, I feel like both players are in such a strong position. They both have that almost four-step plan. You can see it on the board. There, Tord has this next Charizard set up ready to rumble. There's two basic Pokemon on the bench. You know, they could be thought and, and, thought and bait at any point. Those could... So, that, that Squavit could become an Urshifu VMAX. It could. It very much could. Um, you know, with Thornton, anything is possible. But here we see Nofume taking the knockout on towards Charizard EX. And we're forgetting the different options that Tord has. He can still go with that Tempting Trap if he has, uh, if he's able to take this off the, uh, off the prizes. We know it's on top of the prize card, so odds are he may not be able to go that route. However, in maybe a game two, he might be able to use that. But let's talk about this game for sure. Now we see the Charizard EX on the bench. A fantastic pivot in Pidgeot. It's just putting that into the active. And I think towards deliberating exactly what he has to set up as an additional attacker, perhaps. Yeah, I was just looking at those two Pidgey on the bench as well. You know, the, the longer they sit there, the more afraid I get of yoga loopage. <laughs> I've, I know it's a far way off yet, but that Sobble's been kind of sitting pretty there for a while, and it, it wouldn't take a whole lot. It wouldn't take a giant leap no. to be planning for a yoga loop here. It certainly wouldn't, and it's usually a combination that we saw quite a long time ago, this quick shooting in Teleon with the yoga loop, uh, with that yoga loop Medicham, but here we see Tord prioritizing Ooh. that uh, Ooh, rapid strike in Teleon. He's got that rear candy, he's got that Medicham, and he's got this, that Rapid Strike Italian on the top of his deck, and maybe all possible with this one right hand. Oh, oh, 
Oh, don't tempt me. I'm not sure if it's possible this turn just because of the exact damage that needs to be dealt, but I love that it's a consideration for this battle. It feels so strange, but in the most wonderful way. <laughs> I think because Todd has very thin lines of attackers, he has to use these different options at some point. When you come up against something like Charizard, you know what you're coming up against, right? You're coming up against these multiple Charizard EXs that are doing maximum damage, or trying to do maximum damage with this Burning Darkness. Now, Todd only has a finite amount of of these resources, so has to utilize some of these unconventional options that he has. Ooh. Here we go. There we see the quick shooting Inteleon. We haven't seen him in quite a while. And I've got to say, I've missed him. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good card. I, I think it's a throwback to when we had the Inteleon engine back in uh, back in format. But of course, now Tor's looking to utilize that 20 damage, possibly soaking up on the Pidgeys on the bench, like you mentioned earlier. However, Nofume still has outs to evolve those Pidgeys for the later turns. Here's yep. my favorite supporter coming back. Thornton is back in the deck. It's back, that Thornton, that tricky little Thornton. Um, of course, giving Tord so much flexibility when it comes to the Pokemon that he plays with that Thornton, able to get those Pokemon from the discard pile straight into play by switching out another basic Pokemon. Ooh, strong super rod there. Charizard EX, Radiant Charizard, and another fire type energy joining us back in the deck feels like a big refresh turn like a big breath of fresh air back yeah. into the deck everything goes i i agree <laughs> i agree i think Tor, you know Tord plays these two super odd he plays two pal pads so he wants to keep this trend of playing these tricky surprising uh, supporters like the thornton like the rye hand to find these combination pieces so you know it's no wonder that he's putting so many of those resources into this list yeah, it's imperative for him to make sure that he's continuously checking on those resources and, again, thinking that four steps ahead, thinking, OK, what needs to happen next for me to take these four prize cards and in which sequence can I do so to restrict Nofume's damage output with that Burning Darkness attack? And here we see the Burning Darkness onto Nofume's Charizard EX, of course, with that... Uh, well, how much damage is that? Sorry, that's 240, 270 damage. So putting that Charizard on 290, only 40 HP left, Amy. And you know what that means. Ooh, I know exactly what that means. We might be in for a yoga loop in time. <laughs> oh, it would, I, you know, I've never, ever seen a yoga loop on a Charizard. No. Yeah, I've never seen a Charizard EX do yoga. No. Oh, well, you don't know what you're missing, Amy. Oh. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> and here we see the INO from the Fume, just that added bit of disruption to Tord. I think a lot of players would relish playing these disruption cards against this deck only because there are so many different pieces, as we keep mentioning in this deck. This disruption uh, can, some, well, you would hope that it would be detrimental to Tord for Nofume. So Tord's managed to get the double turbo energy still in hand. There's a boss's orders as well. I'm not sure what else they saw. There was definitely a gold card, which are a little bit harder to see. But, you know, starting off the double turbo energy, not bad at all, because we know that Quick Search Pidgeot can go and find that Medicham for us. Uh, Charizard has Manual Retreat on board. So I'm feeling like it might be a yoga loop. I think it's all but possible, uh, you know, with that Quick Search Pidgeot EX. You will be able to find all these little intricate pieces regardless. But you know what helps, Amy? Having Ultra Ball in hand already. I think what you would want to try and find here is, of course, the Ultra Ball for the Medicham quick search for a possible switch out, just because then you're not having to discard that valuable energy from that Charizard EX. I adore that. It would be fantastic. Even a, you know, I'm thinking maybe even a Professor Turo scenario could be possible here. Yeah. Just pick up that Charizard. You got a bit hurt there. I'll just, I'll just bring you back to the Pokeball for a minute. We're going to heal you up, bud. Take you to Nurse Joy. I absolutely love that idea. Uh, I really do. Putting the Arvin onto the front of the deck. However, he might have different thoughts 
Um, but here we see just a deliberation here from Todd. I think that Todd, you know, with this deck, he really has to play this out correctly. He really has to understand exactly what plays and what am I required to do in this sequence. Do I play this Ultra Ball at the right moment? What am I prioritizing with Quick Search? This really is poetry in motion. Timing is essential. And here we go for an Arvin, going for a Heavy Ball and a Forest Seal Stone. Oh, yeah, haven't used a V-Star move yet. Yeah, and we're speaking about decisions being made. I would imagine a decision is to be made with this Ultra Ball, but I'm guessing it's going to be the Medicham, and you know what that Forest Seal Stone can be attached to? It is that Medicham V itself. So this is, oh, this is fantastic. So you're able to quick search for a card as well as use the Forest Seal Stone, and then you still have the uh, further option of Star Alchemy. Oh, I love this. I know I shouldn't. I shouldn't relish in it so much, but I never thought, I never thought I'd get the joy of seeing a, ch a base Charizard deck, like the basis of a Charizard deck, <laughs> utilize Medicham V. I absolutely love it. A fantastic Pokemon in Pokemon Go, and now look at us go in TCG. And this is really interesting now, because Todd has used his history in Heavy Ball, but opted for the Bidoof rather than that all-important Morwell. So we spoke about Morwell being an option, optional game plan for Todd in this matchup. However, going a different route, he's he's entertaining us here. He's going to go for that Bidoof. He wants to take a win in a more unconventional way. He doesn't want to stall this out. He wants to take those prize cards, Amy. And I reckon he can. Oh, and we see a scoop. Oh, my goodness gracious. Didn't even give him the glory of using the yoga <laughs> loop. You absolutely love to see it. Oh, my goodness. Set up perfectly again with that fantastic Pokemon mathematics. Yeah, Nafume just seeing the writing on the wall there. I think with the Yoga Loop, with Todd able to take an additional turn, it would put him so far ahead in the prize race in the long run that Nafume didn't really have a chance to get up and running again. I think that once he would be three prizes uh, down in that matchup, he didn't really have a chance to get back into it. No, it's almost too little too late. There's just not much you can do to come back from that without some sort of stall tactics, but it's not what Charizard is an expert in, unfortunately. Uh, it just doesn't quite take the biscuit enough, so we see Todd once again prevail on stream with this, what a lot would would consider a mixed-ashed <laughs> menagerie deck. Yeah, he's proving anything is playable. <laughs> he's uh, taking any cards that he found in his binder, slamming them in, and now I'm only joking. I think that all of these cards have a specific reason to be in the deck, right? I think that he's taken a card from, like you said, each of these sets. He's taken the best of everything, and he's gone, you know, I've got this game plan for this matchup. I've got this game plan for so-and-so. And I think that, you know, it's going to be taking a lot for towards to get what he requires Requires. However, he's proving us all wrong here, Amy. And I love that. I'm super happy. It's great. I all, I feel like this is kind of something that I preach a lot, is to say that any deck can be good if given the right spirit, pilot, and dedication to testing during this format. You don't necessarily have to test something against every single deck. It's about knowing the big guys and just saying, you know, I, I, I'll make my deck flexible enough that I should be able to worm my way out of other circumstances. I completely agree. And here we see the first look at the prize cards. Unfortunately, that quick shooting Inteleon will be sticking in there. Of course, unsearchable with that Hisui and Heavy Ball and Fort Nafume. Just that one Charmander, oh, two Charmander, sorry, in the prizes. That might be quite detrimental on his initial setup. But I think that Tord isn't posing much threat early on enough to be uh, much of a problem. Two Charmander is never really what you want to see. Luckily, I think you're right. In this instance, Todd's going to be having a very slow start, much like last time. I think after seeing this deck play a few times, it's very clear that those setup turns seem slow, but they're so important. And you can just tell that Todd is, like I said, thinking four turns ahead taking every step one bit at a time and just making sure that every combo piece is in the hand before it gets seen on the field. I mean, it was great to see. He benched that Sobble so early on compared to when he evolved it for that pivotal turn to evolve into the Inteleon, start quick shooting. And that's exactly what you're talking about. He's, he's playing four steps ahead, right? He's thinking, okay, I need this to knock out the Charizard. This is going to be my game plan. And we speak about those unconventional methods using those weird and wonderful options that he has in his deck to his great advantage. 
Yeah, and I mean, having to target down a Sobble when there are two prize Pokemon on the field feels bad. It's just not nice to have to go, oh, I know what that does, so it's difficult to continue with that. No, I completely agree. And here we see two Rotom fee on the field for both Nafume and Tours. Those instant charges so integral to either player's engine. Uh, we speak about these combination pieces, these rare candies, these Arvins. They need to be searched, Amy, but unfortunately, these quick search Pidgeot aren't going to be available to you from turn one. So we'll have to naturally draw into them. I love this inclusion in the archetype, just that added bit of consistency. Honestly, I'm just excited to see what happens because Todd's going to have to take a different line of attack into this Charizard deck and to, again, this hyper-consistent Charizard deck. We'll have to see if their smart strategy could be the key to victory. Yeah, for sure. And that Artisan coming down again will definitely be to Tord's delight. Uh, being able to search one of his many basic Pokemon in Pidgey or the Charmander or even the Mawal or the Badoof. Who knows? There's so uh, many to well, choose from. It's so like a many. zoo. So many. Oh, I love that. Tord's Ark. Brilliant. Oh, That's the name. That's it. We figured That's it, it out. Oh, this is genius. Oh, we're there. We're there. We've sorted it, guys. Tord's Ark. We've sorted it. Perfect. But here we see the Artisan for the Pidgey. Pidgey coming down, of course. He has to prioritize prioritize this Pidgeot. I think it's so important to be able to search these little one-off cards and that qu uh, quick uh, quick search. Pidgeot will give him that option. Yeah, again, just setting up, making sure that that Pidgeot's down as early as possible. We saw how much work Pidgeot put in last game, and I think it's needed. I think it's necessary in this matchup, if I'm honest with you. I think otherwise, you no know, Fumi could just really kind of stand firm with a really strong board state of a bunch of Charizards, and no one's really going to be able to deal with that. No, completely agree. And I'm eager to see here what he does with this Forest Seal Stone as to whether he attaches this early on to start... Oh, no, going for the instant charge. I do like this, only because he wants to be able to use these different options to their maximum impact, right? He wants to be able to use those combinations to their maximum effect, and that's exactly what he's doing here. He's slowly biding his time. And then the Urshifu V down, which we didn't see at all last game, got discarded very early on with a with a lovely Rapid Strike energy on already. It'll be interesting to see whether well, Nofume decides this is a threat to early on enough to start going, oh, actually, okay, I'm going to deal with it <laughs> now, or whether we end up with some rapid flows. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see it. I think with this bench of this uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu V, this is asking questions of Nofume now. And this is exactly where these mind games come into play. I think with this bench, Nofume will be altering these, his own game plan. Right now, I have to prioritize the Manaphy. I have to get this down because that Rapid Strike Urshifu poses such a big threat early on in the game such a huge threat. Neither player is conceding an inch. They both need this. They both want this. This is the win and in to top eight of it our check special event. You've got to play safe, but with Tord kind of bringing out these obscure tactics, it's hard. It definitely is. It's, it's making things difficult for Nafume. but talking about prioritizing Manaphy, Nafume is just able to evolve these Pokemon straight up. It's absolutely no problem for him. Uh, finding the Arvin as well will mean that he's able to possibly even evolve this other Charmander on the bench. I think now with all of these really strong stage two Pokemon with such high hit points, all towards Rapid Striker Shifu will be able to do is start softening these up. These high HP costs will be coming down of course, by only 120, and I don't know if that'll be enough for Tord to pose some early game pressure. Yeah, very well said, but this is looking very strong from Nofume. I'm liking the extra energy on the Charmander as well on the bench, just getting as ready as humanly possible, taking no chances, thinking, right, if I do get stuck or if I get disrupted in any way, I want to be able to do exactly what I want to do. And we see that lovely Charmeleon with the brand new ability, Flare Veil. Yeah, Flare Veil, very important. A great addition to this archetype. And then, of course, with that Pidgeot Quick Surge as well. I mean, we've mentioned it so many times, the fact that it's in both decks. It's such a great, versatile card, able to search out any card you like. And with that Flare Veil, of course, preventing all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokémon, of course, does mitigate that threat of a Yoga Loop. It always feels good to have something like the Bidoof as well, 
that has the kind of bench barrier-esque effect, being able to say, oh, at least I know I'm safe from that. <laughs> yeah, and the Fume takes the first prize card of this game, taking out that Sobble. Of course, keep calling no longer an option for Tord, but I doubt it would have been it would have been played just for the fact it's the only other Rapid Strike Pokemon is on the bench, of course, with that Urshifu and then Artisan, of course. I think this is gonna to be Tord's first play of each uh, of each turn, only because deck knowledge is knowledge of what you can do within the game. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the line is here. I'm not sure where we're going. And, and I'm excited for the train ride. I like, I like a bit of uh, spontaneous adventure. I'm going on a little adventure on towards Ark. I'm not sure where we're headed, but I'm not upset. I think what's fantastic with this Rapid Strike Urshifu is that because it has such large HP cost and it's not going to be knocking out any Pokemon, the Burning Darkness isn't posing so much of a problem. Because it's only doing 180 at the moment, it's not knocking out this VMAX. And because Tord has cards like, say, Professor Turo's Scenario, he can soak up that damage once again and leave Nofume's board with two damaged Pokemon. I think that's such a valid point that if Tord does choose to VMAX this Urshifu, he's leaving it with a bunch of HP that he knows for certain no Fume cannot deal with in a singular turn. It needs to be whistled away. And this is exactly what we mean by these different tools and these different cards that Tord has. He wants to be using them to maximum effect. Because he only plays one ofs, it's really important that he plays them at the right time. Yeah, timing is crucial in every aspect of the word. And speaking of timing, here finally is our V-Star. Yeah, Star Alchemy being used, uh, searching out one card within the deck. And of course, I'd imagine, yep, there we go. It is that quick searching Pidgeot. And of course, instantly going back into the deck for Tord. He's got something on his mind, Amy. Oh, I don't, I don't know what. I don't know where we're going, and I like it, but I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, the line I really like at the moment is he will be able to retreat into the Urshifu and, of course, it's, uh, start doing some damage on this Charizard EX. If he's able to hit it with for 150 with a Gale Thrust, he starts setting the right numbers up for another Yoga Loop play. If he's able to Gale Thrust, then have the chance to G-Max Rapid Flow next turn, it puts this Charizard within prime range oh i love that i love that so much and again knowing that charizard itself is not a threat to this urshifu right now with zero ways to modify that 180 damage naturally other than allowing Tord to take some prize cards well we say that we would have loved to see a gale thrust but unfortunately 100 furious blows i think is the option here for Tord. Mm -hmm. being able to do 150 damage is still the same amount of damage that would have been relevant if it was for, uh, through a gale thrust as well and being that rapid strike issue if it was 220 hp it's still not uh it's still not an option for nafume to take this knockout yeah it's a tough tough call I don't know whether part of me, if I was Nofume, would be wanting to try in some world to to take down the Bidoof or the Pidgeot. The Pidgeot's kind of not possible yet, but the Bidoof is an extra element of that consistency for Tord. I don't know. It's so difficult. You've got to let Tord take some prize cards. You have to. That's the problem, I think, that Tord is playing around. He's playing yeah. around the Burning Darkness and starting to cap that damage output. I think for Nafume, he would like to start taking more knockouts here. I think I'd like a knockout on the Bidoof, like you say, taking that consistency away from Tord, but also a potential Charmander. Oh, nope, but opting for the Bidoof. I think that's uh, both what we would have liked to have seen. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally on board with the Bidoof, honestly just trying to slowly chip away at the consistency of Tord's deck using both disruption methods and denial of those card draw methods. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, but I think now that there's no damage on this Rapid Strike Urshifu, it still poses the same problem for Nafume. If Tord is able to evolve this Rapid Strike Urshifu into a VMAX, Nofume is still unable to take these knockouts uh, on that large HP Pokemon. So I think if, if Tord is even able to take one prize with a G-Max Rapid Flow, it still, it still poses a lot of problems. And I think this is going to be a familiar story for a lot of Tord's opponents through uh, day one and day two. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The element of surprise of this deck as well, even if you had the deck list, 
Even if I gave you the deck to study, <laughs> it still doesn't stop things jumping out at you. Yeah. It's, it's like the uh, Jack in a Box of of decks. You're like, oh, and I think I'm safe. No, oh my goodness, where did that actually be myself from? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the magic of how Todd approaches this game. I remember back when he play, uh, first released his kind of take on Lost Box with just those four Colorus's experiments. I think a lot of people look up to Todd into how he thinks and how he likes to uh, imagine the game to be played. Uh, and this is just another another fantastic uh, scenario for him. Genius. The show off is ingenious. Genius. Yes. Absolutely. Such a pinnacle of our community showing, like you said, anything to win. Anything, anything, anything's playable. Everything's playable. <laughs> And here we see the Charizard EX coming down, Infernal Rain, raining down those energies onto that Charizard EX. And of course, the Burning Darkness, they're able to do that 180 damage for knockout on the Fume's Charizard EX. Quite surprised with this play. Um, I think I think starting to take prizes, of course, is now increasing the Fume's damage output. So he will be able to respond with a knockout, possibly on that Rapid Striker Shifu V. The fact of the matter is, Todd would not take this KO if he wasn't confident that the four-step plan is in place. That's a good point. That's a good point. I would never doubt him. <laughs> never doubt the master. I just have full faith. I'm certain that by activating Nofume's larger damage output, Todd knows he has to be more careful, right? The, he knows that the moment he attacks, this race has begun. They're both off the starting line. They are gone. Yeah, he has a game plan in mind. And of course, with that Rotom V on the bench as well, that might be a different option for Tours to be able to get ahead of the prize race. And with that lonely old Charmander on the bench as well, that could be G-Max Rapid Float as well. You know, there's a lot of different routes that Tord can take here, but here we see Nafume start his turn promoting that Pidgeot EX. Free retreat on that as well. Such a great pivot. Great pivotal Pokemon. We always praise those free retreat Pokemon and love it when there's a big EX to be faced with as well. Yeah, such an advantage uh, to have to have that free retreat as well as the quick search. And here we see the quick search being used, of course, going for that super rod. I think he's needing to get some more pieces of the Charizard line back into the deck to start evolving that Charmander. I think he understands the threat of that G-Max rapid flow. Uh, a potential gust on the Rotom V as well as the knockout on the, the bench Charmander. We know that Manaphy is in the prizes for Nafume. This isn't going to be ideal and he really needs to mitigate this problem. Thinking about weakness and resistance for a moment. Pidgeot isn't necessarily too scary to leave in the active spot. It in isn't. This matchup um, with Urshifu not doing quite as much damage as it would like to Pidgeot as it is resistant to fighting types. Whereas Rotom, unfortunately, as we assessed last game, is weak. So there could be some interesting plays here from Nofume using our weakness and resistance. I think what's going through Nafume's mind is how do I stop a potential Yoga Loop play? I think leaving a Pidgeot in the active, yes, it does have that fighting type uh, resistance, of course, but if Tord is able to b uh, use Burning Darkness on the Pidgeot, it does put it within that range of a potential quick shooting or a Yoga Loop, has, as things currently stand with the prize race as well. It is rather scary. I've got to say, you just can't leave any of your Pokemon in sort of 20 or 40 <laughs> HP area. Like, it's it's the danger zone. It is the danger zone. There's so many things to contemplate, but I think for Nafume now, I don't think his board changes from here. I think there are too many risks uh, to play out any more sort of basic Pokemon, any more low HP, or potentially a more V Pokemon like Lumenion. I don't think Nafume wants to be starting to play these only because of how much Tord still has to play with. Yeah. That's the thing, Todd's toolbox. It's, it's almost like a, um, a toy box as well. Like yeah. you say, it's so much to play with. Yeah, there's so many different words to describe it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. It's fantastical. Fantastical and magical creation of Todd. And you love to see it at this stage in the format as well. Yeah. When some might say, some some critics <laughs> might say that this is a solved format. Well, I pose to you the threat. 
that has toured Reklev. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think a lot of people coming into this tournament would have thought, oh, this format's stale. This, you know, everything is discovered. Everything, you know, to be played for has been played. But of course, Tord taking this, to, uh, taking this unique take on the format. And here we see prioritizing bosses' orders. I really like a knockout here on the Rotom V. Mm -hmm. Potentially, again, he needs to start using that G Max Rapid Flow. I think only because if he's able, oh no, going for the Pidgeot. Mm -hmm. Maybe going for that Yoga Loop play that we was discussing earlier. I love that. I like that. I like the Pidgeot as well. Because again, you're trying to tighten each. They're both going for it. They're both doing it. They're, they're tightening each other's resources. They're going, no, no, no. I don't want you to be able to get what you want on command. And both players have tried it. We've seen the Bidoof knocked out on Tord's side. Now Pidgeot possibly on Nofume. Even if it takes a couple of turns to get there, Tord is still saying, no, no, I'm... I'm not actually afraid of your Charizards. I, they, they don't bother me. I'm going for the Pidgeot. There's something I'm not seeing because I think I have to ask Tord why he's not going for the GMAX Rapid Flow. Maybe it's because that Professor's Turo scenario is in the prizes. He is unable to pick it straight back up. But I think this is just as fantastic of a play because doing 240 damage to this Pidgeot EX, of course, one quick shooting, one Yoga Loop, and he's taking another turn. Yeah, then we're out of there. But an Iono may slow things down again. Now Tord does still have his Pidgeot EX and Nofume does as well. So we still on both sides of the field have that brilliant quick search ability. But Pidgeot on Nofume's side is looking a little bit more worse for wear. Certainly is. Certainly is. And of course with that you know, added disruption it will put Tord only to four cards in hand. He would have loved to have seen that. Such large hand remain there of course for next turn. There are so many little pieces that he needs to fulfill his strategy does have the Hisui and Heavy Ball does have Worker as well and I think that was an Arvin I believe in the hand as well so let's see if he can get back up and running next turn I certainly hope so I would like to see this battle close out one way or another I've I want to see a yoga loop again, but part, I want to of me, see a yoga loop. but part of me doesn't want to see it as well because I believe in the consistency of Charizard yeah, and of course, there are, diff there are different routes here, of course. He does have game already on board. Can, of course, go for that Rotom V with the boss's orders. If he's able to pal pad that boss's orders back into deck, find it with quick search, find those little pieces. But there are so many different plays, so many different combinations that he needs in order to take this one. Yeah, and whether disruption is going to interrupt either player's flow is yet to be seen. But there we go, Nofume is down onto two prize cards towards still has four to take but as we well know they're rather good at taking those prize cards they rather are and of course uh, Artisan being used here just checking out how many outs he has oh dude does have the oh does have the counter catcher of course Ooh. can quick search for that rapid strike Urshifu here we here see we the go. Arvin going for that counter catcher quick search for the rapid strike Urshifu and, and cross switcher for the Rotom <laughs> And he's able to G Max rapid Yay! flow for the game. Nailed the weak spot. That's all we love to see. We didn't get to see the yoga loop, but bench damage was still a huge part of Tord's victory here. Yeah, of course, using those all of his outs, of course. So many different one-off.